So at this point, you're either confused as fuck or eager to do uh, UV mapping or maybe both. So let's just get to it. All right, let's just utilize all the things I've just uh, instructed you to do. So here's a cube. All right, I'm just gonna duplicate one and just put it to the right. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to show you a decent workflow into practicing. I'm not saying this workflow is for intermediates or high level. This is just for for beginners. So you actually understand what the fuck you're doing when it comes to UV mapping and how the entire you know thing comes together. And doing it this way that I'm about to show you is is a good thing in terms of asking for help because this is really easy to resolve. You can just print print screen a picture and I can instantly help you with this workflow as well. All right. So what you're going to do is you could just select whichever object, go to UV, UV editor, close this little toolkit right here. So what I want you to do now is if you select the right one, all right, you can see that the UV maps are the same for, for both of them. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this one, right? But we're going to start from just having the faces. This will make sense in a second. All right. Select the right one. Go to UV and press automatic. What this does is it gives you all the different faces from all the angles. All right. So if you would compare this one to this one right now, you can see that this one is well done and this one just has a lot of faces that aren't connected whatsoever all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to try to copy this so go select the right one go into the uv editor right click select edge all right now this is the cool thing in maya 2018 it actually shows you with a white line like this where the object is not connected to anything, where it, where it is cut, in other words. If you select the other one, you can see that it has uh, blue and white ones. The white ones are the edges all around. The blue ones are the intersections, all right? So what we're gonna do is you can do it in two ways. You can either select it out here, and hold down shift to select a few lines like that, select three, and then go back to the UV editor, shift, right click, and the top menu right here, MS. All right, bam. What this does is, as you see right now, you have blue edges now. These three, one, these three edges, if you just right click and go to UV, double click on this one, W to move it, you have four connected edges. Beautiful, all right, edge, and then I want you to connect, like these two pieces can be pretty much connected anywhere, as you see. If you, if you just check the edges, it can be connected anywhere, right? But what we want is to, is to copy this one, right? So we want it to be connected down here. So I'm just going back to this one. I'm going to select that edge and I'm going to press G, which is repeat last command. All right. It didn't actually repeat, so I'm just, so I just select the uh, edge, shift right click, top menu. I'm gonna try pressing G this time around. G, there you go, beautiful. But as you see, it's outside the frame, right? And what you have to do now is sh not shift, uh, just right click, UV, select the whole thing, shift, right click, unfold, and unfold. And there you go. You can just unfold it again, I think. Well, then it just switches side. But as you see, this is the same shape as this one, right? No problem whatsoever. That was pretty easy. We're going to do this one more time. So what I want you to do is select the object, right click, object mode, go to UV, press automatic again. But this time around, I don't want you to, you know, select the edges out here. I want you to select them in here. All right. So I'm gonna start connecting this edge. And then I'm just gonna press G to repeat. And I've reached a part where this happens. We'll just move it up a bit. If I would connect this edge, that would mean 
it will do a full circle. All right, I will connect, connect it to itself. It'll look like this. Now this doesn't look bad, but the problem is that if I would select it like this, that would mean I would select two faces. Meaning that in the UV map in Substance Painter, if I was to draw on this, I would draw on two faces at the same time. You don't want that. Unless, well, it's an object like a cylinder where all the sides would just have to look the same, which is acceptable in special cases. Not in this one though. So Control Z until we get it back. So now we know that we have the body. You can check it out pretty much, but just going to face and just select shift selecting it. And you can see that we have a full circle, but, but one edge that is not connected. All right. That's absolutely perfect. There it is. All right. Go to this edge, move and save edges. And then we press G over here. We go to UV, select the whole thing, shift, right click, unfold and unfold. And voila, we're done. This is the workflow you kind of have to utilize for a while. And I know it's, it's so mind-numbingly boring at the beginning because it's frustrating. You're not used to the tools. You might be pressing something wrong and yada yada. But trust me, this is one of the things where as soon as you get into the workflow and you, you understand what the fuck you're doing, it is so easy. And it helps you so much with texturing. And this is one of the things you have to know and have to be really good at when you're going to work within companies. A good UV map saves an immense amount of time and headaches for that matter. All right. So let's just jump to another one. We're going to do cylinders up next and, uh, that one's a little bit trickier. There's a little bit more. I'm going to show you one and more of the menus. I'm going to show you cylinder, cylindrical as well. So uh, if you're done, if you're done with this part, jump to that part. If not, just repeat this part and just master it. All right. All right. We're going to keep on practicing. I'm going to use a cylinder this time around. And of course, there's a lot of people that are going to go like, oh, well, why don't you just go to UV and press cylindrical? And we can do that, of course, but for the sake of this, we are going to keep on using automatic map to make it a little bit harder and to just keep on practicing with the tools. So this is the way we want it to look. So we're going to press the other one, go to UV and press automatic. And as you see, this is pretty decent. It's not bad at all. But what happens is that you have one, two and three and four different parts, right? What you want to do, and as it shows here, this is the reason I wanted you to upgrade to 2018, of course. It's because if you would select the UVs like this, you see that there's white lines, right? These white lines represent the edges of these objects right here. So I don't have to actively look for them. I can just select this one, select that one, and then go to move and sew edges. There you go, done. And I'm gonna do the same thing with that one. I'm just gonna press G to repeat last command. Same thing, same thing with that one. G to repeat last command, and there you go. What you have to do now, of course, is you have to select everything, right click, unfold, and bam. Beautiful, just like that. The difference between this one and that one is just that this one is just packed differently. If you want a lot of details or whatever on your textures, you kind of want it to be bigger like this. The bigger it is, the more details you can actually press in with precision. All right. That one's that one is rather easy. What you can do right now, and this is a step up. If you have, let's say a bottle or something that is pretty cylindrical in form itself, you can select this object right here. And this is, uh, above beginner level, of course. You can select this object, you go to UV, you can press the cylindrical. It'll give you something like this, which isn't bad. It, lo it looks pretty bad at first glance, but it isn't. You go to UV, select everything and unfold it. This is the way UV mapping is look UV map is looking right now. You might have object that looked like this, but it's pretty easy to understand if you just look at where it actually decided to cut the object. All right. So what you want to do as a begin at the beginning is 
I have this one to refer to, of course, which makes it so much easier. But what you want to do at the beginning is you want to cut the top of it off and the bottom of it off. All right. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to select edge, double click at the top. Um, you can use a short commando, which is a uh, short command, which is shift X, or you can just uh, shift right click and cut. All right. And then I'm going to select the bottom of it and I'm going to press G and then we're going to select everything. Whoa, there we go. Select everything, right click, uh, shift, right click, unfold, unfold. This one is starting to look better, right? The only problem is this. This one isn't sewn together, so let's just move into edges and then unfold it again. And bada bing, bada boom, you have the same result. The thing is, it doesn't make a lot of sense when you're doing this on, on the same type of cylindrical form, but you might have bottles that might, you know, uh, look a little bit like this is gonna this is gonna look really wonky, but I mean, let's just say for the sake of it that it looks something like I don't know this for some reason. All right, and then using the cylindrical UV map is actually gonna make this so much easier. You just cut off the edges, and just move into it together. All right, I don't know what the hell this is, but. <laughs> You kind of get the point. And to finish my example, I'm going to use a little bit more complex object, which is this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, UV, automatic, and there you go. You have a lot of pieces. All right. What we want to do as a starter is when you have these type of cylindrical objects is you want to cut off, cut off, uh, cut off this piece right here and cut off this piece right here. You want to keep the body for itself and you want to keep the, the head and neck for itself. All right. So what we're going to do in the beginning is, uh, is that you have chunks like this one and you have chunks like this one. And then you have, um, chunks like this one and that one, you see that this one is a, is a big chunk like that. It doesn't have a cutting line that goes through it, but this one and this one has it. We can just start by um, shift, right click, and just sew these pieces together so you have four big pieces instead. Go to UV, select everything, shift, right click, unfold, unfold. All right, cool. So what you wanna do now is you wanna start connecting these four B, uh, big chunks together, okay? So let's just do it like this. Then move to edges, and then you want to keep on doing this. And you can just press G to repeat last command. Last one right there, and G. All right. So what has happened now is that we have this, and then we're just gonna fold this. Not lay out. Unfold. There you go looks like this, right? You have a little bit of gap right here. We're just gonna go to this gap. If you double click on the gap and just press F out here, it just actually goes to where the gap is. And the problem is this isn't connected. So we're just gonna go to move to edges. So those two bad boys together, I'm gonna check where this is. F, which is the inside of it. And we're just gonna so, 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 so. All right, cool. So what we have now is that we have the entire body pretty much with some exceptions of the bottom pieces right here sewn together. We are actually just for the sake of practicing going to exclude the bottom pieces and we're going to go to edge, double click on this one and press shift and X. If you press it out here, it doesn't have, it doesn't do anything, but if you press it inside the UV editor, it actually does something. And to see the results, you actually have to go to UV, select everything and unfold it and bam. All right. You see the body shape right here is looking way better, but then you have some pieces that aren't really connected to anything. So you want to connect this one to its piece and then you can just skimmy around, do it like that. 
and unfold this bad boy. And there you go. All right. You can see that there are some pieces that aren't really connected right here. Just make it look better like that. And then G, 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 baby, baby. There you go. And of course, this is really tedious, but keep on unfolding just like that. All right. And then you have, of course, these pieces right here, which is the top. What you want to do pretty much is you want to connect every piece just like that. Um, you want to make sure that it almost goes all the way around, just like we did on the box. All right. That. To make it easier to see, you could actually just move it out and just make it as big as you want it to be. And as you see, this is a full length. It's time for the other one. So let's go to just like that and just G and then, no, whoa, whoa, there we go. Just like that, all right? And then you go to UV and unfold, bam. Just like that. And you see how it just tightly packs everything. It's just because you change the size of this one. You just make it smaller and then do the same thing again. And there you go. All right. And as you see right here, the piece is missing from this part, but it's all the way over here. If you want to place this piece right there, just go to edge, shift X on this edge over here. And then go to edge, select these pieces right here, move and sew. There we go, move and sew. Um, it's pretty much, that is pretty much it. I mean, you could connect these pieces together as well. You could connect, I mean, there's a lot of things you could do, but as, we, as we're standing right now, we have the body, we have the bottom right there, we have the top, we have the kind of on the side of the head right there, the neck, whatever you want to call it. We have the sides and everything. So this is pretty much the workflow you want to go about when you're exercising on a little bit more of a complex object, object like I'm doing right now, especially if you're a beginner. And then you can pretty much just jump to using cylindrical or planar or whatever, if you want to use that. But if you don't have a very good basic understanding on how automatic works, I don't think your understanding of any type of, you know, the cylindrical or normal based or whatever will get any better. All right.